Now that you know about the periodic table and atomic structure, we're going to build on that knowledge to look at the formation of molecules. So as you just read in the book, a molecule is two or more atoms bonded together. So we're going to look at atomic structure and see how atoms will bond to each other. Let's start with a couple of carbon atoms. So go ahead and do two carbon atoms. So remember, make a C, represent the nucleus. And if we look up here, we find carbon. Right here is carbon. And it has an atomic number of six. So that means it has six protons. We can assume it also has six electrons. We're going to put two electrons in the first orbital. And that leaves four for the second orbital. Let's draw another carbon next to it. These outer electrons are called valence electrons. So whatever's in the outer shell is the valence electrons. And in the case of carbon, it has four valence electrons. There's a rule called the octet rule, or it's sometimes referred to as the rule of eights. If the second or third orbital is the outer one, the valence one, the atom wants eight electrons. So an atom wants eight valence electrons. So these carbon atoms have four valence electrons, but they want eight. So in order to get eight, they can get together and share. So if we have one carbon atom with its two and its four, and then we make the other carbon atom like this, so that their valence overlap, they can share those electrons. This is called a covalent bond. So these atoms are now bonded to each other. We now have molecular carbon. We have C2 because they are sharing those valence electrons. Another thing that can happen is an ionic bond. So let's draw sodium and chlorine. So if you go back up to your periodic table, find sodium, it's right here, and chlorine is over here. Sodium has 11 electrons, chlorine has 17. So let's draw these two atoms. So in order to get to 11, we have to add that third orbital and put one electron in it. So there's sodium. Now let's draw chlorine. Chlorine has 17. We're going to do our 2 and our 8, gives us 10. And then we have to add a third orbital and put 7. So sodium has one valence electron. Chlorine has seven valence electrons. Now you might be thinking, oh, they could get together and share also. But that's not what's going to happen in this case. This is going to be a different situation. They both want eight. But in this case, the easier way to get eight is for sodium to give an electron to chlorine. 
So let's look at chlorine. Let's redraw chlorine now that it has received an electron from sodium. So there it is. It has three orbitals with eight valence electrons. So chlorine's good. It's happy. It has its eight valence electrons. Now let's look at sodium. It gave away that one valence electron. It no longer has a third orbital. Now we only put two orbitals on sodium. And notice the second orbital already has eight. So now it's good. They both have eight valence electrons now. Which is what they want. Atoms want eight valence electrons. But let's look at how we changed them. Remember, sodium's atomic number is 11. That means there are 11 protons here. Let's count our electrons. We have two and we have eight. So we have 10 electrons now because we used to have 11, but we gave one away to chlorine, so now there's 10. Notice that the protons and electrons are no longer equal to each other. You have one more proton than you do electrons. So if you add this up, 11 positive things and 10 negative things comes out to positive one. So we now have sodium that has a positive charge. This is called a cation. Cations are atoms with a positive charge. Let's look at chlorine. Its atomic number is 17. So that means there are 17 protons. But if we look at the electrons, we have 2 and 8 is 10, plus another 8 is 18. So we have 17 positive things, 18 negative things, that adds up to negative one. So chlorine now has a negative charge. And an atom with a negative charge is called an anion. So these are both ions now. An ion just means a charged atom. And you can have two types of ions. If it's positive, it's a cation. If it's negative, it's an anion. There's an old saying, you probably know this, about opposites. What do opposites do? They attract. So anytime you have a cation and an anion, they will attract because they have opposite charges. So now your positive sodium is attracted to the negative chlorine. And they get together and you get NaCl, sodium chloride. And I'm sure you have this in your kitchen and you eat it every day. This is table salt. So now our atoms are sodium and our chlorine are attracting to each other because the sodium's positive, the chlorine's negative, and opposites attract. So this is an ionic bond. Next, we have hydrogen bonds. So for a hydrogen bond, we're going to look at water. Water is H2O. So let's come back up here. Here's hydrogen, has an atomic number of one. Here's oxygen with an atomic number of eight. So let's go draw these atoms. So we're gonna have oxygen has two electrons, 
six electrons. There's our eight. Hydrogen only has one. And it's H2O, that means there's two hydrogens. So we need another hydrogen here. So remember the octet rule, oxygen wants eight. Now, hydrogen doesn't have a second or third orbital. It only has one orbital. So it does not want eight. That rule doesn't apply to hydrogen. But hydrogen can help oxygen get eight. So notice oxygen has six. It needs two more electrons. Each hydrogen has one electron. So that's why it's H2O. So they're going to get together and they're going to share. And water molecules kind of look like Mickey Mouse. They end up like this. Here's your two hydrogens. Here's your oxygen. So again, this is a covalent bond, but this is a polar covalent bond. So the hydrogens each share their electron with oxygen. But the sharing isn't equal. It doesn't go two ways. Pretty much hydrogen's letting oxygen borrow its electrons. So this means that at any given time, oxygen would have two electrons in its inner orbital and eight electrons out here in the valence, which would give oxygen 10 electrons. Hydrogen, most of the time, has zero electrons because it's letting oxygen borrow its electrons. Oxygen, remember, has an atomic number of eight, so it still has eight protons. If you add this up, it comes out to negative two. Hydrogen each has an atomic number of one, so each has one proton. At the hydrogen end of the molecule, you have a total of two protons and zero electrons. So this adds up to positive two. That means that in a water molecule, the oxygen end is negative and the hydrogen end is positive. This is polar. Polar means it has opposite ends. So water molecules have a negative oxygen end and a positive hydrogen end. So then think about what happens if you put two water molecules together. If we have a water molecule here that's positive hydrogen end and negative oxygen end, and we add another water molecule, the negative oxygen end of one is attracted to the positive hydrogen end of another. So you have an attraction right here. That attraction is a hydrogen bond. A hydrogen bond is an attraction between the negative oxygen end of one molecule to the positive hydrogen end of another. So this makes water molecules bond to each other.
an interesting experiment you can do, and this is kind of fun and neat. Get a penny, or it can be any coin. Lie it flat on the table. Start slowly and carefully adding drops of water to it. If you add drops of water onto the penny and make a bet with your friends how many drops of water you can fit on the penny, you'll be amazed. When I do this in class, I have students get typically 30 to 40 drops of water on a penny. And the really neat thing is how high it builds up. You'll get this big dome forming on the penny of drops of water. And that's because all of the water molecules are sticking to each other. They're holding each other together in this big dome of water on the penny. Another interesting thing you can do is get two strips of paper and get them wet. If you have a strip of paper here and a strip of paper here and you get them wet so they're each kind of coated with some water and then you put these two strips of paper together they'll stick to each other again that's because the water molecules on each surface of paper are bonding to each other and then holding them together so hydrogen bonds are very important in water, and they also occur between water and other molecules. So hydrogen bonds hold water molecules together, or to each other. And they hold other molecules to water or even ions. For example, if we take that salt we made earlier, sodium chloride. If you mix this with water, water is attracted to the sodium and to the chlorine. So the salt will dissolve and dissociate in water. You'll have the sodium here, you'll have the chlorine here. The negative oxygen end of water molecules will attract to the sodium. And the positive hydrogen end of water molecules will attract to the chlorine. So hydrogen bonding holds water molecules to each other. It also holds water molecules to many other substances. As long as there's a charge, the water will be attracted to it. If it's a positive charge, the oxygen end of the water is attracted to it. If it's a negative charge, the hydrogen end of water is attracted to it. So just to review our three types of bonds, we have covalent, is where you share electrons. You have ionic, is when atoms give and receive electrons. And hydrogen is positive and negative ends of molecules attract. Covalent and ionic are the ones that form molecules. Hydrogen bonds don't form molecules. Hydrogen bonds occur in molecules that already exist.